Hello everybody, welcome to one of my videos. My name's Jamie from Wolves Games. Today we're doing a top 10 video. Okay, I haven't done many top 10s on my channel, but I've got three rules for my own top 10. The first one is going to be on any system. The second rule, only one game per series. So if it's a game that has three games in the trilogy, only one of those three can be picked. And the third rule is, it's going to be in a certain order. So games I enjoyed the most, games I played the most, and games I've got most memories of. So basically it's a memories video also. We're going to start off with number 10, Morgan's Games, favourite beat em ups. Let's go. Number 10. Okay, first one on the list, I'm sure you guys are not surprised, this is this feature, number 10 goes to Rise of the Robots on the C32. Okay, so the game is Rise of the Robots, a fighting game released by Time Warner Interactive in 904, originally played for the Mega and MS DOS by Mirage's Instant Design. It was brought into various video game consoles between the Snares, the Mega Drive, and the 3DO Interactive Multiplayer. And the game includes a single player mode, which a player assumes to roll on the sidewalk and attempts to stop the supervisor and takes over Electric Corps facilities and much of Boris Hall. And yes, it does feature in my top 10. The reason why it features number 10 is of course down to its flaws. Not gonna lie, it has many of those. Not many characters, not many moves, not many special moves, and of course the cyborg has to be there by default. When you're playing one player, two player, even your training mode setting, it has to be there in that confrontation. But yes, the cyborg's strength, his agility and his intelligence, weaknesses, his human CPU, and can suffer mental fatigue. But yes, apart from his controls, he only has seven moves. That and two special moves also which is the turbo headbutt and the shoulder barge. The seven basic moves are the jab, the flying kick, the low punch, the kick, the big punch, the low kick, and the crouch auto block. And the Sentry Boy only has six moves, and one special move which is the flying jet kick, but does have good range. In fact, he has no weaknesses of any shape or form, but his strengths are his tactical intelligence, his speed, and his air agility. And of course, you do have the power bar, which is that blue bar. You hold the fire button down, and it determines how much power you put in your attacks. Bear in mind, there's not actually many attacks, but here we go, it's a fantastic game. Okay, so of course you can play as other characters. Go to one player, go to training, and we're going to select someone different. So we're not going to go for the cyborg, even though it has to be present, we'll go for the military droid. Okay, now the table's a turn. Now, I am on the right, I am the military droid, who has eight moves, the cyborg only has seven. And three of the robots only have six, but he does have two special moves. You have the teleport spin, and the cyber slash. Which is fantastic, but he has a much, much faster character. Strengths is speed, technical intelligence, the heavy blow force, and weaknesses in vulnerable CPU housing and limp joints. But there we go, amazing, really is good. But yes, I do love the game, many, many people don't like it. But yes, I got it on January 1995, I've hit my CD32, Boxing Day 1994. It's not a very long game though, but it is a good game. But anyway, that's number 10, that is Rise of the Robots. Number 9. Okay, move over to CC4. Coming at number 9 is Way of Exploding Fist. Okay, so the game is Way of Exploding Fist, a 1985 fighting game based on Japanese martial arts, developed by Beam Software, by a team consisting of Greg Barnett, Bruce Bailey, Neil Bradlin, and David Johnson. Originally developed for the CC4, published in May 1985 by Melbourne House. Ports were made to the Amsterdam CBC, ZX Spectrum, BBC Micro, and the Agent Arc Electron, and the Commodore 16. And it comes in at number 9, and this actually was the first beat em up I ever played. And what makes it a good memory for me is also, yes, being the first one, but also my brother bought it for me. In fact, it was the first computer game he actually did buy me. I know, I was there. In fact, I was going through this basket in John Menzies, and I put this one out of the basket, I liked the look of it, and he said, I'll buy it for you for your birthday. And that was it, I can't remember how old I was though. But it was an absolutely fantastic game, it really is good to this day. And of course there's so many other good games similar to this, but this one is a good memory for me. And of course it does have the Invader Load, which I did feature on one of my previous C4 memory videos. So basically you're playing a game while it loads, which is Space Invaders. But I haven't actually managed to finish this game before, but I can't remember how far I've got, but of course you do go up in grades, or belts, which in this case is first dan, still very early on, and depending on what sort of attack you do, you might get half a yin yang, or a full yin yang. We've got to try and get two full yin yangs to win the confrontation. No continues, no two lives. But it's great. 
The player takes part in a series of one-on-one -on -one karate matches, all overseen by a wise old expert who appears in the background. Once the player defeats an opponent and moves up to the next stage, the more difficult adversary awaits them. Fights are not won using energy bar styles found in most modern fighting games. Said the player needed to win two complete yin yangs. Any move that's difficult to the opponent would end the round. A loosely timed or borderline kick or punch would obtain half a yin yang, while a well executed move would obtain a full yin yang. Two complete yin yangs and you win the bouts to progress to the next level. Currently, a third dance still quite early on in the game though, but of course, you get it much more difficult than where you progress into this game. But I don't actually know if the game is actually completable, I have no idea. But yes, you do have the evil time limit, and yes, it's very rare the time limit does come into play, but occasionally time it does. But if it runs out, it will then depend on who's got the most yin yangs. If it's a draw, I guess it comes down to who got the yin yang first. There you go, kick to the nose. One half yin yang to win. One and a half to win for him. Fifteen seconds to go. And this game also does have the occasional bonus sections, which takes place with a ball. Raging ball, you're basically punching directly to the face. It's all about timing. There we go, have some of that. But there we go, fantastic. Wave his golden fist. Number eight. There we go, coming at number eight, we return back to the me again. Fantasy game, body blows. Copyright 994, all rights reserved. Fight. Okay, so the game is Body Blows, 903 Fuzzle Game, first published by Team 17 for the Mega. A version of MS DOS featured the same year, the game is compared to Street Fighter 2. It was followed by Body Blows Galactic and Ultimate Body Blows. And it's absolutely fantastic, but it loads back in the day, and this one features number 8 for this video. Now, back in the day, I bought so many Amiga magazines, and I had a demo of this. In fact, I still got it. It's right here. Disc 51 of CU Amiga. Team 17's brilliant new beat em up, so he packs a punch. And we've got exclusive two player demo for you. Also, on that demo was a demo of Pong, Tank Attack, and Nick Fowler's Golf. The problem was, it was a two player demo, and nine times out of ten, my brother was never around when I wanted to play it. So, I never actually did manage to play that game as a two player. So, it's a bit just to play on your own, anyway. But anyway, I'm reliving that experience because, of course, that demo was these two characters, Nick and Danny, which, of course, are brothers. So I am Nick on the left, the previous Danny on the right. So there we go, a win for Nick. Fight. Okay, Nick versus Ninja now. Now, even though I did play that demo quite a bit, it's no real fun playing a two-player demo with one person. One person doing all the work, one person standing still. But anyway, it's all I had during the time I was saving up for a box. But anyway, I got a bit lucky during that time, because eventually I got another magazine. Another one to purchase, another demo was received, right there. Mega Power, Disc 23. Exclusive two-player demo of Team 17 Street Fighter 2 Beta. And it was these two characters, and once again, I'm living the experience. But again, it was a two-player demo, could play that one either. Not as two players, anyway. My brother was always out at the time, always seeing his friends, I hardly saw him. So again, playing a two-player demo on my own. But yes, it was these two characters, and Ninja, of course, has a sword. And when I finally did get myself the box right. version, which I paid £21.99, Ninja was the first character I picked. And when I finally got myself the full box version, it was so great to actually play the game with two people moving. One by me, and one by the computer. But also, on that demo, you had a demo of Sleepwalker, and that also had two characters, but only one in control. Which is fine, everyone does his own thing. That wasn't too bad. But anyway, we are playing as Nick. He's a local gang leader and hatred for his brother Dan. His main moves as a power uppercut and ability to throw like his bolts. Special moves is the power punch, the effective bolt, the super roundhouse and the inner energy bolt. But you can also block in this game and at the moment of time, that's all he's doing is ninja. Stay in the corner, but you can also win by time limits. But there we go, amazing, absolutely superb. A win for Nick, that is body blows. Number 7. There we go. Coming at number seven, we remain on the Amiga, International Karate Plus or RK Plus, whichever way you want to pronounce it. It's fantastic, really is good. Copyright 1988, Archer McLean. Okay, so the game's International Karate Plus, a fighting game written by Archer McLean and published in 1987 by System 3. For the CD4, MCBC, and the ZX Spectrum. It's a successor to International Karate, released in 1985, and Activision published the CD4 version for the US game Chop and Drop. And it's brilliant. 
Cannot remember what age I was when I first got this game, but yes, it was a physical version. It was It Squad. Unfortunately, the box went astray over the years. Of course, we have it now on the C32. And there's no difference between that version and the other version. Just the fact it's on the CD. It's the only difference. No digital moves, no digital skills, no digital music, or no digital intro or outro. But I don't know if this game is actually beautiful anyway. Of course, we've got to go up in belts. But of course, the most important thing in this game is don't lose. Stay in and you move on. Any time you don't use, you can put it to points. Apparently, according to the instruction manual, it's actually possible to do that move, but not both characters down at the same time, and you get 2,000 points. But as a result of that, you do earn three bonus points. Of course, it's not going to be easy, because you want both characters to be in the right location at the very same time. Like that. There you go. 2,000 points and three bonus points. There you go. Okay, defect the balls one points each, or avoid them. So these feature after every two bouts. Now some versions had two, and some versions only had one. The C4 version only had this one, because the bomb stage is not feature. But on this one, you've got to try and deflect the balls in front of it on your shield, and it bounces off the screen with no additional damage, and you do earn 100 point bonus. Get through it completely, and that does it you're doing, because you get so fast, you do earn 5,000 points. It's a great way to boost your belt. You know it becomes brown. You press the help key, it gives you an update of where you currently are. Now, I've always saved me back in the day, the reason why they're actually heads is heads that belong to failed attempts. So basically, if you fail, you lose your heads. I kind of believe it. Right. It's very quickly, it's very, very fast. Some do count a little bit different than others. There's a flash. There you go. Fantastic. Black belt, baby. <laughs> Kick bombs off for 100 points each before they blow up. Another international karate deluxe game, IK++, was ready but unreleased for the Tyrus Team and Amiga in 1987-88. The version for the C32 was released in 1904, and in 2003, McLean's Initial Entertainment was released IK++ for the Game Boy Advance and PlayStation in Europe, which remained faithful to 16-bit. And the C4 version was re-released on the Virtual Console Europe, July 25th, 2008. Right, focus on this now. Now, every time you knock one of the bombs off the screen without exploding, you earn 100 points. And like the last one, get successfully, get through it, and you earn another point bonus. But yes, this is not featured in every single version. But it's good though. But yes, sometimes you get a bit greedy in a level like this. And sometimes you think, right, I'll get another one, but I've got time for it, and all of a sudden, boom, you knocked out of your equation. But it's a great way, like the other one, of getting additional belts increased. Which, of course, you press the help key, it tells you where you are. Where I am, I have no idea. Oh my lord, 5,000 points! Well, still going, going fairly well, even though I'm spending more time on the floor than on my feet. You can't just stay in that way, it's become last. So yeah, it's one of those few beat-em-ups, both in the world, it's actually players two player, even though this game is much more difficult in two player mode. So yeah, sometimes computer players really go a bit crazy. Yeah, it's not looking like you're going to win this one. I'm trying. I'm trying my best. We've run out of time. Time is we're all on the floor. Every single one of us is on the floor and we're out. But there we go. More enough footage though. That is IK Plus. But how do we do in terms of belts? We achieved belt five. Not my greatest. I think the best I've ever done was black belt seven. But there we go. Number six. There we go, come at number six, we return to the C32, Shadow Fighter, absolutely superb game, played this game loads back in the day. Okay, so the game is a Shadow Fighter, a fighting video game for the Amiga, Amiga C32, developed by Naps Team and published by Grim Interactive in 994. The game was acclaimed by critics, and in 996 it was ranked the 20th best game of all time by Amiga Power. And on the C32, it got played to absolute death after buying it from HMV. But amazingly, I've only managed to finish this game with one character, and that's Stand Up. To get the full true ending, you've got to try and complete the game with the hardest difficulty. And even Body Blows, only two characters to finish that one with is Lore and Maria. This game got played so much more. Also, as two player, one of my friends from school, and it was Michael, played it quite a bit. And this is Slam Dunk, age 24 from Denmark. Slam Dunk combines the mastery of basketball with expertise in all fighting arts. Special move is the jumping B ball, the spinning B ball, the spinning fire kick, and the head spring kick. Kuri, aged 30 to Tibet, no one is quite sure what Babu Kuri really is. He prefers his personal history to remain isotheric than other people desire. 
special move is the power smash fist, the body drop, the rock roll, and the spin fireball hand. Let's put a bit of fight on this one, but anyway, absolutely brilliant, I love it. Is that a draw? It's a draw. Who would have thought? The game itself is one that would normally expect from any fighting game. First through three rounds, since all opponents have reached the main end. The game features 17 characters, two hidden, and one from around the world, including one from Spice. And you get a perfect, you get 25,000 points. A double perfect, you get 50,000 points. A win for Slam Dunk. Now, the only other character who would have nearly finished the game on the highest difficulty other than Slam Dunk was Cody. In the meantime, we're up against Tony, but for this one, we'll go for Salvador. Age 21 from Spain, and learning to fight on the dark streets of Madrid is how Salvador made his living, bare level fighting against some of the greatest. Such a move is a spinning power ball, a turning backflip, and a flash panther. And Tony is also very good. Age 20 from Italy, based in Florence, Tony teaches the fighting arts involving the signals of fire. Such a move is the burning uppercut, the spinning fire, the flame kick, and the massive uppercut. And also, in the instruction manual, it only tells you two of each character's special moves. The rest you're trying to figure out for yourself. Survival to violence and Mortal Kombat, Blood Mode is also included in the game, which can be toggled on or off. This appears to be nothing more than just turning the floor into red protection colour. And if you play the game continuously, which you did as a two player, it eventually becomes a red carpet. But anyway, it'd be nice to try and finish the game eventually with more than just one character. It's very difficult in the hardest difficulty. It's, it's going to take some serious doing though. But the game is great, and of course, so many things are like Mortal Kombat, but also like Street Fighter 2. In fact, how you perform the moves themselves is very much like Street Fighter 2. But there we go, a win for Salvador. Number 5. There you go, can you tell what it is yet? I reckon some of you probably have got it already. But anyway, move over to the snares for number 5 on the list. There you go, took the words right by my mouth. Absolutely fantastic, played loads back in the day. Don't have the original box, only have the original cartridge. But I do have the reboot, came out in 2013. This is Killer Instinct. Okay, so the game is Killer Instinct, an arcade fighting game developed by Rare and published by Midway. Initially released in arcades in 904, the game advertised would launch in 905 as an intended Nintendo Ultra 64 home console. The Ultra 64 eventually materialised as a Nintendo 64, but never received a version of the original Killer Instinct. Instead, the game received a high profile launch of the SNES, which bundled in a CD of remixed game tracks with a limited edition of black coloured cartridge. As well as the release on the Game Boy handheld the following year, both the snares and Game Boy versions were published by Nintendo. Very, very, very difficult to read at the same time of doing it. It's brilliant. I haven't played it for a while though, but I did play it loads back in the day. Again, my friend Danny had this one, and he played lots of two players around his house after school. And also, this was the first game I played where I took part in a tournament. There was about eight of us in school, we all went round someone's house, I think it was my friend David, and we all played this game, we all picked a character each, and let's see how far we could get. And I was Saber Wolf, which apparently people said was my favourite character, he wasn't technically, this is the fact I beat a few people with him prior to it. But anyway, I'm not very good at finishing this game, but anyway, that is the Rain Dance. Because this game does have finishers like Mortal Kombat does. An awesome victory. Okay, next in store, Glacius. I do like the character designs in this game, but yeah, I was never really sort of good at doing the combos, but my friend Danny was absolutely superb at it. I mean, the ultra ultra ones you can do with ease. I managed to do one. How I did it, I don't know. It was just sheer luck. I just basically mash mash the controls. One day it went right, but that's the only one I managed to achieve. But of course, that's one of the fun of the game, trying to get the best combo you can possibly do. I mean, that was. Blaster, which is 9, 21,350, but we are currently Chief Thunder, mystical defender of the Native American. Thunder entered the contents in order to uncover the mystery surrounding his brother's disappearance in the previous year's tournament. Special move is the Phoenix, the Fast Phoenix, the Summer Mish, the Fly Mohawk, the Triple Axe, the Reverse Triple Axe, and the Tomahawk. But we're going to try and do one more finisher. Of course, the first one was the Rain Dance. We're going to try and do the Axe Uppercut. Fine, we don't lose, of course. But yes, Glacier is a tough character, but I do also love the level designs and the music. It really is good. But anyway, the next one's going to be done at close range. So make sure you use the right attack, which in this case is a fierce kick. Fierce kick does a fierce punch. So you go off the screen, goes into the next universe. Awesome victory for Chief Thunder. He hasn't come down yet. It's still up there. It's in orbit. 
Okay, last one to put into this part of the video. We'll move on. But now I'm Orchid. I have to admit, Orchid and Jago, both of them I wasn't really any good at. In fact, they're the only two characters I haven't finished this game with. Orchid, 23. Black Orchid is the secret agent sent by an unknown group to investigate the mysterious disappearances that surround the Killer Instinct tournaments. Her true identity and abilities are shrouded in secrecy. Special moves is the Laser Ken, the Flick Flack, the Fire Cat, the Turbo Fire Cat, the Spin Sword, the Itchy, and the Back Flip. And let's try and end it with another finisher, shall we? But it's not going to be an ultra. I can't do them. But again, I do like the art style. I do like the character designs. Of course, each character, to win the confrontation, you've got to run down both their energy bars. You can do it however you can do it. Master, that helps. 21, 500. Right, the next finisher, you've got to be at four cats of distance. Back, forward, forward, quick punch. Uh, back, forward, forward, Q. Basically, what happens is, she shows you her boobs, and then you die. Yes. Yes, exactly. Anything can happen in a game like this. Awesome victory. Death by boobies. But there we go. Speed and score. That's more than enough footage of that part of the video. That is Kid of Instinct. Number four. There we go. Coming at number four, Soul Blade. I probably put the green, green screen being me, you know what I mean? But anyway, fantastic game. Copyright Namco Limited. Copyright 1995. Okay, so the game's One, Soul Edge, five, a fighting game developed by Namco, Team Project Soul, and published by Namco, as the first installment of the Soul Player series of 3D fighting games. Introduced at the Jammer Show in November 1905, the full arcade version was released in early 96, and later in December, an upgraded expansion version of the game was brought into the PlayStation. The PlayStation version was renamed Soul Blade in North America, Europe, and Australia. What a game it is, featured at number Two, four in my list, and it's absolutely superb. Rinse it from Blockbusters, and me and Rose played quite a lot as a two-player, and eventually I managed to get myself a full version, which I could not wait to get. Now, of course, you get special moves, but not quite like Fireball you get in other games. But on this one, my character's special moves the Firefly Tail, the Atomic Blast, the Firebird Slash, the Twin Hopper, the Edge of Hurricane, the Tip of Death, Heaven Strike, Cut Grass, Triple jump kick, spit you in two, and the steel explosion, which is basically a critical edge combo. Now, if you keep doing it and you fail to make your target, or you've got too much, you can actually lose your weapon, which in my case is a sword. And also, you get a time limit and you can also knock them out of the ring, which is quite comical actually. In fact, it was the first game I played that did that. But anyway, Wong Tong Chong is me, and Taki is computer. And so far, so good. 24 seconds of May, we're on the floor. And of course, you can attack them while they're on the floor. Not them into the next century. The but absolutely brilliant. Really you win. A win for Ong Song Chong. Okay, stage eight. Eight. Now I'm Lee Long versus Rock. Salt Edge was developed as an experiment by Namco to explore the possibilities of weapon based fighting games. And was the first motion capture based video game created by using passive optical system markers. Soul Edge was initially released in arcades in 1995. Which I've never seen before. But anyway, it's absolutely superb. And of course, this one does take part in quite a high area. But falling out of the ring on this one, you fall quite some distance. It's quite comical, really. But anyway, other modes in the game is arcade mode, team battle mode, time attack mode, survival mode, versus battle mode, practice mode, and edge master mode. It's basically advancing along with the story, you continue to fight, acquire opponent's weapons in this mode. And the quiet weapons can be used in other modes. Which is good. That used to be played quite a lot as well back in the day, but I think our mission save has gone astray over the years. Right, close to the edge. Have some of that. <laughs> Down he goes. I have finished it many, many times. I don't know if I've actually finished it with anybody. It's been so long ago though. Okay, the big bad boss. Why not? Let's give it a try. Battle. One. Okay, Fight. stage 11, the final confrontation between good and evil. Lay Long vs. Soul Edge. Always been a tough confrontation this one, but I'm pretty sure I have finished it with this character before. But I'm pretty sure I've not finished with everybody. Of course, even here, you can be knocked out the ring. It can change very quickly. You have full energy, you get knocked out the ring, that is it. There you go. Special moves, wine, the serpent dance, the circle construction, the double stab, the drum beat, the snake venom, the monkey magic, the dragon's elbow, the harpoon driller, the rising kick, the crazy windmill, and the fine brimstone, which is a critical edge combo. Right, one nil to lay along. 
And also, you can change the size of the ring. But for this, we've gone for the default setting. Because as you go even smaller than this. Right, try and knock out the ring, shall we? Try to. Right in the jaw! That's <laughs> some of that! Win for Lei Long! They go more than footage, that is Soul Blade. Number three. There we go, a very iconic opening scene. It's a great game, it's a classic, it had to be in there somewhere. Coming at number three, the version I've gone for is on the Mega Drive. Gone for Street Fighter 2 Special Championship Edition. Copyright Capcom, Night 1, Night 2, Night 3. Licensed by Sega Enterprises Limited. Okay, who should we be? I didn't really sort of have a favourite back in the day. I suppose in a way it's probably Blanka. So I quite like electrocuting people. Yeah. But we'll be Ken. And we're heading over to Japan. Oh my lord, it's like Danny and Nick all over again. Okay, so the game is Street Fighter 2 Championship Edition, a fighting game released by Capcom in 1992. It was launched for arcades and converted to several video game consoles. It was the first of the updated versions of Street Fighter 2 as part of the Street Fighter series. The main changes were the addition of the four Grand Masters as playable characters and mirror matches. The fighting techniques and eight main characters in the original game were further balanced for competitive play. And Champion Edition was followed several months later by Super Street Fighter 2 Turbo. Great memories of this game, even though I did play it quite a lot on the Mega. Yes, I like the Mega version, but I've got more memories of the Mega Drive. My friend Danny at school, I think he had every single one on the Mega Drive. But yes, the amount of times I went round his house after school, and we played lots of two players of this game. A few of my friends did have the SNES version, but didn't play it quite as much as this. But yes, I didn't really sort of have a favourite character back in the day. I suppose it was Blank, I suppose, but I think the first person I picked was Dal Sim. But yes, he's a good character, but a little bit of a slow size. But anyway, it's Ryu... Computer, Ken, me. There you go, a win for Ken. Any remaining energy is averted to points. Battle 3 is Ken versus Blanca, a little known bizarre fighter from the jungles of Brazil. For years, natives have reported seeing a half man, half beast roaming the rainforests. But only in the last year, the beast named Blanca appeared in the cities of Brazil and challenged any fighter who would dare fight him. Special moves is electricity and the rolling attack. I didn't know a lot about that, that's a perfect. In addition to the eight main characters, the four Shalu bosses, Bullrog, Vega, Sagat, and M. Bison, are now playable characters. The Shalu bosses were toned down considerably for the previous iterations, but remain relatively strong compared to the standard eight fighters. The returning eight main characters, techniques, and priorities were further balanced for the competition between the different characters. But anyway, there goes my double perfect. But anyway, it's a fantastic character, of course, yes. Many, many characters have the usual different ways of doing their decisional moves, and some use the rapid fire ability. Which, if you're playing a two player with a person sitting next to you, they sort of know what attack you're trying to pull off. But anyway, great memories. Really is good playing this game with friends. And of course, the mega version I've got. Great fun playing that one, but does involve quite a lot of this swapping. But that's Street Fighter 2 on the Mega Drive. Okay, another bonus game in a fighting game. But anyway, very well known in the 90s to do this sort of thing. But basically, the rules are simple. Smash up the car in the time limit. Doesn't matter how you do it, use your feet or your hands or special moves if you have them, or you know how to do them. But when you do it in the time limit, you get additional score. But yes, apart from Final Fight and Street Fighter, there's really wasn't a thing at the moment time that did this sort of thing, but I'm sure there are more. Anyway, apologies about the owner of the car, but anyway, end it for sure you can. Why not? Perfect. 15 seconds remain, 30,000 points is awarded to you. Number two. Okay, for number two on the list, we turn to the PlayStation 1. This is Tekken 3. Absolutely amazing on the PlayStation 1. Okay, who should be this time? Paul Phoenix. Okay, so the game well, is Tekken 3, a fighting game and the third entry in the Tekken series. It was released in arcades in 907 before being ported to the PlayStation in 1998. The arcade version of the game was released in 2005 for the PlayStation 2 as part of Tekken 5 Arcade History Mode. The game was re-released as part of the Sony PlayStation Classic. And it is a classic, it's absolutely outstanding. When I bought it from Electronic Booty, I just couldn't stop playing it. I played it that much, I unlocked all the characters in the first weekend, I just couldn't stop. Played it many, many times with two players. My brother played it, and my dad did as well. And a few things from school. But yes, all the cards got unlocked multiple times. Got it on the PlayStation Classic. I did it all again. 
Of course, there's so many other modes in this game. But anyway, Paul Phoenix is self-proclaimed strongest fighter in the universe in the second series. Paul is a recurring fighter whose popular attempts to win the King of Iron Fist tournament always thwarted one way or another. Okay, now we have Forest Law, who was introduced in Tekken 3 and returned for Tekken Tag Tournament. He's the son of Martial Law and has the same fighting style and the same moves. Like his father, Forest Law is friends with Paul Phoenix. And we're up against Yoshimitsu, who was my favourite character in the second game, but in the third game it was Ling Xiao Yu and Jin Katama. Tekken 3 features a large cast of new characters, including the debut of several new stable characters such as Jin Kazama, Ling Xiaoyu, Brian Fury, Eddie Gordo, and Huang, as well as Julia Chang, with a total of 23 characters. The home version also included a new beat em up mode called Tekken Force and Tekken Ball Mode, which also is fantastic. It really is good. There's so much to see him do in this game, but I loved it so much. But a win for Forest Law. Guy will be impressed with moves like that. You win. You win. Okay, stage five. Gene Kazama vs. Gone. He's a good character, but difficult due to its size. Now, technically, it's the smallest character in this game, but it's not the most difficult, I think. But I've always thought Bob Bong Donovan is more difficult. He's not technically smaller than him, he just spends most of his time on his back. He spends more time on the floor, he does all his feet. Now, you can unlock him by basically earning the copper, silver, and golden keys in Tekken Force mode, and then facing him at the end. Gone can be unlocked by defeating him in technical mode or by achieving a high score in survival mode. Gone is a small sign dinosaur with actual species. When the event caused him to become extinct, somehow he survived. Now spends his time traveling the world, exploring the environment, and interacting with other animals and meats. He's got boxing gloves like Dizzy does. And also, like Abe's Odyssey, he also farts and he can also fire fireballs. Anyway, have some of that. <laughs> it's cool though. That's Jean Kazama. He's spectacular fashion. You win. Okay, we did one stage of Tekken Force mode. This is stage one, it's the back streets, and we are Julia Chung. The adopted daughter of Michelle Chung. Julia Chung made her first appearance in Tekken 3. But anyway, another nice addition to the game. There's so much in this game to keep you engaged, and yet it's fantastic. Yes, it's brilliant, but of course it has the evil time limit. But pretty much it plays like Double Dragon, Final Fights, Six of Rage, that sort of thing. The evil time limit features, we do have also an engine bar. Now, of course, it's very well known for the 90s to pick up food off the floor to replenish your health. And that's what you do here as well. You pick up a chicken. It doesn't give you full health, but it can help, of course. But also, what is a big, big help in this game is, of course, the time limit. You've got to try and keep that topped up. You do that by defeating enemies. Now, depending on how much energy they've got, will determine how much time is warded to you. But yes, yeah, you've got to do it as quickly as possible, because at the end, you do feature a boss, which could be any one of the characters in the game. But in this game, you've got to try and earn the three uh, keys, which, of course, will be done in the bottom left corner. You've got the copper, the silver, and the gold. And we do this to try and unlock Bok Gongolovich, which is the one that spends the entire time on the back. But anyway, it tells you also down the bottom of the screen how much you get through the level and how many levels are in this version. Of course, there are four. Right, Crow, not a lot of time earned from that due to a very small energy bar. My energy's not good, pick up a chicken, it all helps. So when you're confronting the most extreme characters with extreme energy bars, use your extreme moves. But anyway, each enemy will have a time above their head, so don't be able to bite his bulb on the Christmas tree, you'll try and defeat him in that time, and whatever is remaining is given to you, which you take on to the next stage. Again, a really cool thing, it's superb. So there we go, let's see what we got, it's about 24, something like that. Clear bonus, time bonus, bonus time, and we go on to stage 2, but there we go. Okay, a quick go of second ball mode, and we are Dr. B, who's currently on the floor. He's always doing that. But anyway, what you're trying to do in this game is basically you've got to try and attack the other character with the ball. Now this is expert mode, which is the iron ball. So you've got to try and hit the ball with whatever skill you can do. The bigger the skill, the bigger the rewards. But if the ball hits the ground, whether it be on your side or their side, will determine who hits the impact. But if you keep blocking the ball, it increases its power bar, shall we say, located at the bottom left and right sides of the screen. But there's a win for Dr. B, and my TV is trying to turn itself off, but you can't see. There we go, that's second three. Number one. 
Okay, for the number one pick of my top ten list, I'm sure you guys know already, it's on the Mega, it's fantastic, sorry Sweden Sales, you're going to absolutely detest this, it's Mortal Kombat. If you want to skip it, I totally understand, I do have chapters to skip to the outtakes. Copyright 902 by Midway. Okay, choose your fighter player one. Of course, this game has nowhere near as many characters as other games have featured in this video. But anyway, we're going for, as a starting point, Sub-Zero. Sub-Zero. Okay, so the game is Mortal Kombat, an American media franchise set on a series of action video games originally developed by Midway Games in 1992. The original Mortal Kombat arcade game spawned a franchise consisting of action adventure games, a comic book series, a card game, films, animated TV series, and a live action tour. Mortal Kombat has become the best selling fighting game franchise worldwide as one of the highest grossing media franchises of all time. A win for Sub Zero, any unused time converted to points and a flawless victory. But anyway, this game, I absolutely adore it. Of course, I saw it originally on Games Master, and then later that year, we went for a holiday in the south of France during the summer holidays, and lucky for me, there was actually an arcade there of that game. And of course, I was not disappointed, I absolutely loved it. And then found out it was on the Mega, I put it on my Christmas list, and I got it the same year. I was a happy boy. Anyway, a win for Sub Zero, and of course, it has fatalities. And that's my favourite one. So yes, not good for Scorpion, great for Sub-Zero, a double flaws victory and another time bonus, and fatality bonus. There you go. The series has a reputation for high levels of graphical violence, including most notably its fatalities, which are finishing moves that kill defeated opponents instead of knocking them out. Controversies surrounding Mortal Kombat, in part, led to the creation of entertainment software rating boards, video game ratings. Early games of the series were notably for their realistic digitised sprites and extensive use of planet swapping to create new characters. Following Midway's bankruptcy, a more combat development team was acquired by Warner Brothers Entertainment and re-established as NeverRealm Studios. Right, we are now Raiden, the Thunder God. Of course, in the instruction manual, it tells you how to do their special moves, but the fake tags you've got to try and figure out for yourself. Now, he has the elbow, the torpedo, the teleport, and of course, electricity. And the fatality is called the headbang, which will be done at close range, forward, back, 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 fire. Can we get a flawless victory? I don't know. Right, forward, back, 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 fire. There you go. His head explodes. And of course, that gets you 100,000 points bonus. And another flawless victory. Yes, quite an impressive score. The first Mortal Kombat takes place in Earthrealm, where seven different warriors with their own reasons for entering the tournament are required to be in conceded freedom of the realm under the threat of a takeover from Outworld. Among the established warriors were Liu Kang, Johnny Cage, and Sonny Blade, with the help of the Thunder God Raiden. The Earthrealm warriors were victorious, and Liu Kang became the new champion of Mortal Kombat. In Mortal Kombat 2, unable to deal with the minion Shang Tsung's failure, Outworld Emperor, Shao Kahn lures the Earthrealm Warriors to Outworld for a do-over Will It Takes All tournament when Liu Kang eventually defeats Shao Kahn. And even though I do have the second game on the Amiga as well, it came out a year later. I've always preferred this one. Yes, it has less characters, less moves, less special moves. There's something about it. And also, it's a little bit easier than the second game. And also, less dis swapping than the second game. A lot of dis swapping in that second game. Not so much on this one. Right, we do the... Helicopter spin kick, which doesn't mean it's all kill him, just knocks him to the 6th century. A bit like Glacius, early one for Killer Instinct, he's still up there, hasn't come down yet. Okay, Scorpion. Now, of course, in this game, you do have a hidden character, and this was the first of a game I played where that was the case. Which, of course, is Reptile, who featured in the first film. And he was hidden in that one as well, but try and summon him. There's a few activities you've got to try and do first. A double flawless victory and a fatality on the pit stage. But anyway, did you order an original recipe or extra crispy? That is, of course, Scorpion's fatality. Okay, test your might. Waggle the stick to increase the power bar and strike. That's wood. There you go. 100,000 points. Okay, round one, fight. Scorpion versus Johnny Cage. One with the shades. Now, of course, you got to try and do the required things to do to summon Reptile. And back in the day, yes, I did manage to summon him, shall we say. But I don't know if I actually managed to defeat him. He is difficult, and so is Jade in Mortal Kombat 2. But now I'm sort of thinking, do you have to do the pit fatality or just a basic fatality? I don't know. 
that don't take any damage, but using the harpoon instead of getting a helm and cause an attack at long range. Don't try to decay, please don't. Right, uh Phase one done. Fatality, phase two. I think that's correct. I'm hoping it's correct. Otherwise you'll try and refresh your brain box. Double flawless, fatality bonus. No reptile. Right, I need to move. Okay, resume play here. Now, a bit of a mystery. I've had to search the internet I didn't figure it out. But apparently, you're not supposed to block. I don't remember that. But yes, I knew about the fatality and I knew about the double floor's victory, but not blocking? I don't well, recall yeah, that. Yeah. But anyway, we'll give it a try. Phase one complete. But yes, we've got to do a flawless victory twice and a fatality in the pit stage. Alright. Don't block. Keep your distance and don't block. He can block. He's doing just that. Uh, four down four. Fire. Right. Didn't block once. Double floors victory confirmed. Fatality. Fatality. Waiting reptile. There you go! I don't remember that. I do not remember that. I knew about all the other things. But yeah, I don't recall actually defeating this guy. Same as Jade. She was difficult. I think I defeated her once. Because it takes place where you were technically supposed to knock him down into the pit fatality. But yes, of course, he's much faster paced. It goes about 10,000 gears. Now you can block how much you want to. So of course, he has the ability of Scorpion and Sub Zero. And a victory for Reptile. But no acid spit on this one. No invincibility. No orbs. This does anything else. Right. Throws me in mid air. It's difficult to freeze. Well. Well, there you go. It's a mystery. I have to admit, I don't recall that. But there we go. At least we got to see Reptile. Not quite the way I planned it, but there we go. It's a fantastic game, though. But that is my top 10 beat em ups all the time. Hope you enjoyed it. That is Mortal Kombat on the Vega. Okay, buddy, that's more than enough footage. Hope you enjoyed my top 10 video. That was quite a difficult video to put together. I originally planned it to only take two days. It took three days. But anyway, if you're more games, please up and comment. You'll find me on most platforms. I'm more games to find fairly easily. Not videos like this. You've got your budget to have a bit making and live streams on Friday night. You can time at 8 o'clock. It's the highlight of the week. This is on TV. Ciao, bye. See ya. The game includes the single player mode in which the player assumes the role of the EC0352 dice. Ah! Hold on. It. Pick up. Get the guts. Got hiccups. Can't play this game with hiccups. Can't play any game with hiccups. Ugh. It's quarter to nine at night. Who starts a top ten video at quarter to nine at night? It was a successor to International Karate, released in 1985, and Activision published the sequel version in the US as Drop and Chop. Drop, ch ch chop and drop, chop and drop, chop, chop, drop, chop and drop, Jamie. Chop and drop, not drop and chop. There we go, coming up number eight. What happened there? I think my head's shrinking. My head must be shrinking in size. Ninja, please. I need ninja. Ninja, ninja. Give me everyone but ninja at this rate. Nick versus Cossack. Okay, so the game is Where the Spoken Fist, a 1985 fighting game based on the Japanese martial arts develop. <laughs> Hold on a minute. Hold on a minute. Not really. Ports were made to the MCBC, Zenit Special, BBC Micro, Big. Nanga uh... <laughs> Pikina. It was going quite well, so I messed up. Followed the same year. The game had been compared to Street Fighter 2 and was followed by Bonnie Bones Galactic and Ultimate. I'll get it cut. I'll play the game. Marvel too. So you feel that in the morning. 
Okay, so the game is Tekken 3, a fighting game. The third entry in the Tekken series was released in arcades in 1990. Fogging my throat. The game was also released as part of Sony's computer PlayStation. Okay, so the game is Tekken 3, a fighting game. The third entry in the Tekken series. It was released in arcades in 1994. Seven. Seven, Jamie. 1997. <laughs> the arcade is. Oh, that. That's it. That's what you get for drinking a can of Coke. What I do? I'm gonna sip. Okay, so the game is Tekken 3, a fighting game and the third entry in the Tekken series. Is it introduced? The arcade version of the game was released in 2005 as part of PlayStation 2's Mystery of... Hang on. <laughs> How is that a happy ending? He dies at the end. Yes, well done. Just finish the game. Now you're going to die. 